Hello again, and welcome to the never-ending saga of astrological charts referring to the Brexit vote. I did one on January the 15th and uh, February the 15th, and we are following the same line of uh, approach, which is an horary astrology of vote, uh, approach to event charts. We look for the, um, the motion itself, the forward motion from the government is shown by the ascendant and the against that particular motion or those forces which counteracting or arguing against it are delivered by the um, seventh house and its ruler. And what we do is we balance up. We see which one, uh, which one is stronger, whether it's the seventh or the, the ascendant, and we judge accordingly. And whichever one is stronger or gains ascendancy and strength, that is the one that we choose. And so whether it's going to be the eyes lobby or the nose lobby, which is the seventh, uh, we will see when we come to um, examine and uh, 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 analyse the Brexit vote chart, which will take place today at 2.30pm on the 29th of March 2019. Uh, before that, however, uh, I would like to take a look at Theresa May's chart and the transits that are occurring today and see what that has to say about the situation uh, uh, that we will be encountering uh, later on today. So uh, bear with me while I bring up that chart. Well, I hope we can all see this chart. I've been having a bit of trouble recently. This is the third video I've made on this, uh, and it's gone a bit wrong on the recording each time. Typical of a Mercury, Mercury trying to go direct as it is today. Actually, it went, um, it went uh, direct yesterday, but it's only just picking up speed. The, I've uh, availed myself of the use of a wonderful solar fire and its various uh, 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 tools and things that you can use on it. And this is called a bi wheel, and the inner wheel is Theresa May's chart. The transits for today at 2 pm are on the outer chart. As you can see, there's a 27 degree Leo which conjoins with this Pluto and so on. And I'd like to talk briefly about it. But let's have a look at Theresa May's. Uh, uh, chart first and just to do a bit of brief analysis on it. We see the Sun in Libra, a sign of indecision, uh, but also the sign of decision. Uh, Libra is trying to balance up, weigh things up. They they hear the opposite, or try to hear the opposite views um, and then weigh it up into in, in terms of trying to form a harmonious uh, agreement. She's been trying to assert this agreement, saying it's the only one on offer and so on. But uh, I, I do feel when you examine it, that it um, it gives power away to the European Union. Uh, when we're not allowed to withdraw from the treaty unless the other member states say so. So this is a, a kind of really hook, line and sinker if, if it goes for it this afternoon. So this Libra has a duty to try and find a balance, a harmonious coordination of harmony between different factions. But when different factions are so torn apart as they are at the moment, both in the country, in the European Union and in Parliament, uh, Libra has a hard time trying to adjust around this. It just it feels as if it needs to bring things together, needs to kind of harmonise and have an agreement. But see, you can't force an agreement which not everybody likes down people's throats. Anyway, this son in Libra gives us a person um, uh, wanting to make choice, wanting to agree, wanting to bring people together, but having a difficult time. We see the sun, interestingly enough, right at 2.30 p.m. is opposed to this sun. Now, transiting sun often passes by very quickly, not uh, noticing. But because this is a historic moment, I feel that this is an historic position. The... Um, the sun here represents the illumination of something. something. Something either comes to mind very quickly and we see that it's only within two minutes, two minutes of arc of an exact opposition. I think this is very omenic. It has an omen about it. Uh, as if the star from above or the, the illumination of something is finally dawning on her that this is a really last chance motel. The opposition uh, brings to her awareness that perhaps it eventually dawns that there really is an opposition. 
it's not just that other people haven't haven't come to their senses but there really is a united front opposition to what she represents in herself and as she's put herself her political thing behind this vote she's offered to put herself on her own sword um uh, but i i think there was a horrible quote yesterday um she fell on her own sword but actually missed at the same time she tried to fall on her own side, sort of but missed. Um, it didn't do much to the, to the argument or the debate. This Mercury in uh, um, Virgo here has an a, a, a incredible mind for detail. She's okay in an office administrating things with certain rules and regulations. And in that, she can be relied upon. But it, it doesn't stretch much beyond the known. Virgo sees a pattern. It knows its order. It knows its place. knows what to do. But as long as it is confined to anything, as, as long as it's confined within a set sequence of ideas, uh, it's very kind of um, clinical, a bit, um, a, a, a bit over attention to detail sometimes. And so outside of that, uh, d uh, things are a little bit problematic. Uh, that's why it's called the sign of the virgin, because um, uh, virginity really, it really means uh, remaining unmarried. Um, and unmarried means, means unsoiled, you're true to your own nature, but to, to, to work beyond that is a bit tricky. That's why I think Virgo and Libra don't make a great, a great marriage. Virgo is to do with the, uh, um, the, the enclosed self-sufficiency of oneself and working to uh, or make that perfect or to purify that, but uh, Libra is to do with reaching out to, to others. They need others to agree or to um, di dialogue with in order to feel uh, connected to life, which is the principle of the sun being connected to life. Moon in Virgo here, a bit um, uh, prudish sometimes, uh, a difficulty seeing outside one's own set patterns, extremely able, extremely loving and caring and giving in terms of a uh, uh, practical help. She was always looking for the solution to things, but uh, to step outside this into the realm of the other is a bit, bit difficult. Um, as we know, uh, May suffers from various physical ailments uh, and, and uh, difficulties uh, with, with diet and so on, and that, that happens to many moon in Virgos. Jupiter in Virgo here, Bit of a difficult sign for Jupiter. Jupiter is that adventurous uh, nature in it, an adventurous spirit. He's the, you know, we could see him as the swashbuckler or the Errol Flynn's of this world, uh, the Odyssean spirit wanting to um, board a ship and go to foreign lands. And uh, there is this impulse in us, this Jupiterian impulse to broaden our own horizons. He, he arises uh, as a spirit of discovery and enterprise and sometimes a spiritual search. It can be done in, 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 um, politics as well but it's as i say that 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 sense of us that there must be something across the horizon that we don't know and there's an impetus to push through now that's what jupiter is psychologically and in virgo it's really quite contained um perhaps she finds the, the virgo is to do with finding the pattern and following it or making the pattern come true and so it's confined in virgo I would say a phrase that comes to mind is you can't see the wood for the trees. Um, the trees are interesting and you can see the way they are and you can name them and classify them, all very Virgo and things. But to move beyond, to see the whole collection, it, it, what Jupiter is, to see the broader picture of things, is very difficult for Jupiter and Virgo. So here's a person lost in detail. Those 586 pages of this new treaty that she's proposing make no doubt about it there's no doubt about it this is a treaty signed uh, with the eu that we're uh, trying to do that she's bringing to the house of commons um okay there's a brief thing there about those planets this pluto square to saturn and the venus square to saturn a, a, a person who doubts her own worth and has had to prove it to others um, a, a sense of that her own aesthetic, her own attractiveness, her own likability is, is going to be confined or she has, a person can go around with an inner script with Venus um, uh, sat and saying, well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not likable enough, so I'm going to have to prove it. I'm going to have to work very hard. It's a kind of inner inferiority, a self-doubt in one's own attractiveness or likability. 
Her aesthetic tastes, though, are very much connected to Leo. So there is this underneath need to be seen, need to be valued, need to be found attractive, need to be found as valuable. And her aesthetic taste, we can see coming out in the things that she wears, particularly around the neck. They're a little bit overblown sometimes, rather like Leo, larger than life. Or we think that those like, well, personally, I think they don't quite fit, but I'm no, uh, <laughs> I'm no guru of fashion, as you can see. So um, anyway, but what this does, this moon Pluto here, is it, it, it means the exposure of one's real emotions has to be kept under wraps. Um, this moon square Saturn too from across signs, you know, this, this inner confinement, this, I often sense that May is, 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 is squeezing her, her inner emotional uh, sense. And it, it comes out in Virgo, it comes out in particular ways and what she says, she tries to keep things together, but inside there's an emotional frustration, perhaps an emotional fury. And she sees her end is nigh. And uh, this, uh, Saturn in Scorpio defences come to her defence and start to be stubborn and uh, and a bit uh, very very powerful. Always says no, won't see anybody, confining because one of the great fears of Saturn in Scorpio is emotional vulnerability. When they're emotionally vulnerable, they feel they're going to have to die. This is a, a very powerful placement of being in touch with the survival instinct and emotional. Emotional evaluation brings along, em <coughs> emotional expression, should I say, brings along um, all of the emotional doubts about survival and so on. Um, you know, both her mother and father died, I think, within a, a course of a couple of years. Her father died in an accident, I think a car accident. Her mother died of cancer. And uh, very often we can see a person go through deep emotional experiences. Um, however, it makes a person very um, uh, very aware that survival is, uh, uh, you know, uh, she's entered the political jungle, let's say, and survival is always, one has to have, keep, keep an eye on it. Can be very paranoid and uh, 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 things like that. So this attempt to keep things in a narrow, confined things where she can control them, control the emotions, control other people, this is all to do with this placement. Now I'm going to stop there with the analysis of her chart and look a bit more at the transits. Mercury here, well it's in 16 degree of Pisces and for those of you who may not know, the new moon was actually 16 Pisces. Whenever a transiting planet hits the new moon degree of the month, something in that gets charged up. It's like going into plugging into something and then it comes alive. And so we can see here, this is in her 10th house, the house of career. And I think something is going to be said about her career. Uh, uh, she finds this, this Mercury is opposed to Jupiter. Uh, her vision of uh, this this detailed 586 page document is is being opposed. It's as if this the national debate is on. Uh, she's being seen by so say th things, and and she it should probably take. She's seen being seen by everybody worldwide, and I think this Mercury conjunction, the new moon point, gets it's a, it gives it an extra uh, boost, an extra energy. But finally, there's an opposition. The voices are in opposition. Um, and even though the voices are all mixed and problematic and nobody knows where there's any directness at the moment, it's a very confused time. Uh, nobody knows even whether the European Union will allow us uh, more time or to revoke Article 50 or whatever. I think they're getting a bit fed up. But this Mercury is very powerful. It opposes Jupiter and Jupiter in in May's chart is the opposition, is her, her sense of the open enemies of the seventh house. So we have this sun opposed sun, and this Neptune also opposes Jupiter. It's been my experience with Neptune transits that it's about letting go rather than hanging on. Uh, Neptune brings or starts to fluidize or, 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 or make things so, so watery and so this Jupiter is starting to slip through her fingers. Um, uh, you, see, you know, water, you can't hold anything, it slips over, leaves a wet taste, but the, uh, a wet feeling. And, uh, but Neptune is saying, let go. It has, spiritually, it's got a lot to do with surrendering to life. It's 
uh, okay, well, just put yourself in the river and let the Tao take you where it will. And if you oppose that, if you try and saturnize that, one gets soaked, one gets duped, one gets deceived by others. If you, you know, it's it's about letting go with a, with a little bit of faith in to, in life. And this has now come to uh, almost an exact opposition within one degree. So Jupiter is about letting go her visions for the future. Now, I would like to um, uh, just stop sharing there and pause the recording while I bring up another chart. Won't be long. Okay, I'm back. I uh, did this wrong before and unfortunately I, I've done two recordings of this video and uh, analysis of this chart and I didn't get it right before, but I think I've got it now okay it, to share. What we're going to look at now is the event chart of the actual vote. That is at 2.30 today, and uh, we're going to do the usual thing of looking at the seventh house and the, the first house and weigh up what this chart is saying. So I'm going to hopefully share this now, if I can, and hopefully we can bring this up and share this. What I'm now hoping is that uh, you can all see the Brexit withdrawal vote. Uh, and I'm going to apply some RU rules and explain what I'm doing. Uh, straight away, when in any RRE chart or any event chart, you look to the ascendant. And if it's less than three degrees or more than 27 degrees, you know that something is, is at the very beginning stages of something, so it hasn't got much strength. But here we see the fading star of the sun. This is uh, the Leo. It's rather like a, an old has-been actor who's come out and is doing a rather large last performance on stage, and they're, they're kind of a day in the sun, and it's, it's, it, but, but it, it feels as if it's all rather spent. The energy of the sign is, is nearly, it's in the 28th degree here. There's not much doing to it. So this is the last performance, really. That's how I'm reading this. It's very omenic. There's a, a, a sense of last chance motel about this. And we know what fading stars are. They can be over glamorous and over dramatic and, and so on. Uh, you know, this is the glorious Swanson last days of. So... What we have here, and if you notice, if you remember from Theresa May's chart, the god Pluto sits right on here, and her Venus. So uh, what we get from this is, um, uh, again, a kind of omen that her, her Pluto is rising right now. And in a couple of minutes, which will be about eight, eight, eight you know, two minutes on the Ascendant is about eight minutes of actual time and by that time Pluto will be arising it's as if we see the the last the um the Pluto rising from May's chart it's as if she's seeing her own um ending here I find this very um uh, interesting and we'll see what happens but what we do know whether it's the end of her and her, her, her particular reign, or whether it's the end of this uh, issue, we see an ending. Something transforms today in her, a knowledge that uh, she's either failed or succeeded. My feeling is with Pluto that there's an ending coming to it and she sees her final days. Now, we look to... Um, the ruler of the ascendant, which is the for the government, it is Theresa May. Uh, her sun sign ruler Venus is, is conjunct this, so um, uh, it, it represents her in, in, in uh, quite, quite strongly. But we see the sun, although it in Aries, giving a good fight, giving a good showing, still punching for her, her, her own convictions. It's in the eighth house which again is a, a picture or the image of a funeral parlor being laid to rest from morgue or whatever those, whatever you feel, it's, it's just, it's concealed, it's defeated. Um, eighth house in many ways is the house of loss. And so the energy here is lost. Um, it's in Aries, yes, so uh, it, it, does, it, it doesn't give up. There's a kind of uh, an attempt that I fought to the last, but this imagery of the sun alone, apart from Chiron, it's moving off that now, and it, it really isn't very well aspected. And a sun, well as and not well aspected, is a sun alone. 
it, it, its connections to others have been severed or is distant. Or, uh, it, it doesn't feel very powerful. It has no real allies I, I, in a way. And so this sun is rather weak. Um, that's the uh, for or the eyes lobby for her particular amendment vote. And although I think um, there is some strength in being a weak sextile to this uh, uh, thing here, and the, uh, the weak sextile to a part of fortune, the dispositor is strong in, in the 10th house. I don't feel the dispositors and uh, a weak sextile to the part of future, fortune give it, so it gives it very much hope. The 8th house position says it all in a way. Let's have a look to the 7th house the against, whether the vote is going to be actually um, um, you know, given a, 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 a block or a stop on it. We again see Saturn here. We saw this in the first one with the 17 degree ascendant on January the 15th, and we saw Saturn. Saturn is still in its own sign, um, very powerful in its own sign. And um, uh, even though th this isn't particularly aspected well, uh, it's, it's past the sextile of Neptune, uh, but it, it is powerful in its own sign. And we see that the moon, the mover of events, always in events or auraries, the moon represents the motion of the matter. The, it brings it a body, it brings a, a kind of motion on. Well, with about five or six degrees away, it was conjunction. Um, Saturn. That means that the moon contains or somehow carries the um, the energy or the dynamics and the meaning of Saturn forward. This is the no vote. This is the opposition, uh, the solidarity to do with uh, labor and so on. It's, it's a kind of a, a mixed vote here in the House of Commons, the, the group. And it takes it on. And what does it take it on to? You can see this is at 24, and there's that powerful Mars that we talked about in um, both charts, of, of, of the, particularly the February 15th, when it was in, in the eighth house. And it was exactly trying to Saturn. So Mars gained very powerful ascendancy. It's the sign of independent battle, as there's been a kind of obstinate, uh, um, uh, a dynamic uh, disapproval of what's gone on. And although I think there may, may be this, this Neptune, this Mercury Neptune makes it um, predictably uh, impossible to tell because it's so, so mixed in, probably one people are saying lots of people are saying one thing they mean another there's a lot of deception a lot of uh, cloak of confusion i would say uh, uh, around this in general we find that this moon is taking the no vote onto mars this is called a translation of light it translates the power of the no onto mars in the 10th house this is the final victory this is the final challenge if you like and we can see this Mars is square to the ascendant, almost exactly. It's as if this Mars is challenging, it's square. It, it says, no, I'm the most prominent planet. I am the most elevated planet. And whatever Mars represents here, which I think is the no vote, the obstinate vote, it's in the sign of its fall, but it connects Pluto, uh, it connects Pluto, but also this Saturn onto it. I feel that this Saturn, yet again, has the more positive strength as opposed to the Sun, which has virtually none here, alone and lost in the eighth house. If we needed any other thing, we could see this Venus here, uh, which is exalted in its own sign. It's a kind of pleasant place to be, and again, loans a, a kind of benefit. Remember, uh, uh, Venus here is the, called the lesser benefic, and if it's uh, in, in a sign of its dignity, it offers a, um, a, a powerful strength, if you like, to wherever it's placed. So the benefit, I think, yet again, is going towards seventh house matters. And so the final judgment here is yet again, the withdrawal vote is going to be voted down. I think there's a lot of talk behind the scenes and there'll be um, some confusion about, uh, as I say, what people are saying. Uh, but nevertheless, that is my final judgment about this yet again, this third Brexit withdrawal vote. Just come back out there. 
what I've attempted to do in these recordings is to um, both look at the psychology and some of the politics, but my attempt has been to see whether astrology could say anything, whether these significances and our imaginations and what we bring to the chart, uh, it's all in our imagination, of course, but to see whether it has actual any validity in real life. We've been looking at signification and if the chart seems to reveal through its symbolism what the event is, it gains a kind of power to portray a kind of oracle or a, 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 a portentous uh, a series of symbols which, which somehow um, link to the situation. So I hope that uh, anyway, my uh, uh, attempts to uh, uh, amplify some of this system and uh, some of the, the symbols in relation to the event today uh, will be interesting uh, to those viewing this recording. And I've recorded it at uh, uh, 12 minutes, uh, sorry, 28 past 12. And so I'll be releasing this on uh, YouTube as soon as I can. Okay, well, I hope you found it interesting. Comments would be uh, very nice, but uh, I'll see you another time. Bye-bye.